You know, it seems that one of the best ways to make money on the old Yutter is by playing Pokemon Red with a self-imposed challenge, usually something so remarkably remote and awful that no one would ever actually want to do it. The difficulty varying from simple challenges such as beat the game with a single specific Pokemon to more abstract things like adhering to the real world 10 religious commandments to, you know, I just can't fucking see or hear anything. Sit silently in your front room and tap buttons, and I'm legitimately annoyed I didn't come up with it first. I value the concept of originality, therefore I sat and I pondered and what I came up with you wonder? Uh, fuck Vals? But my first fuck all Vals concept came to a crashing halt immediately just because it's a bit over the top. You can barely select a Pokemon to use, so I toned it back to the still very respectable can you beat Pokemon Red without the letters A or E. To begin, I should explain what exactly this means, and what it means exactly is what it sounds like. Can I have some of that Yotob money now? Alright, break it down. Itemize the list. Everything that's banned in order from least to most conceptual. Pokemon names with A or E in them. Mm. Any attack in the game with A or E in them as well. Mm. Items containing those letters. Mm. Poke Center. Mm. Uh, yeah, you know what? Just this save feature. Can't have saves. So yes, essentially, if there is an A or an E, I am sickened by it. Disgusting. Get it out of my face. It's banned. Now, what isn't banned that contains those two letters are containers for other things. What I mean by containers for other things is like the item menu. It leads to a place with non-disgusting letters. It's not the end-all be-all function. Or the mart, or as I like to refer to it, the shop. And instead of a cashier, we're talking the employee, uh, the work, nope. Uh, I'm calling him the fucking guy. Yep, and that therefore doesn't restrict us from enjoying the two things I can actually use. Since save is a function itself, it's the end-all be-all. I've banned it. It's not allowed. Poker Center, you use the Poker Center. It's got like two and a half E's in there. That's disgusting. Also, if you're not privy, just for the record, saving allows you to start from wherever you saved and that's the power of it but I do save and turn the game off but I only do it back in my hometown because I don't want anyone to think I did this challenge in one sitting because dearie me there's a lot of walking back from Pallet Town that's going to go on. Now that we've decided all this it's time we go into the fun of picking out a Pokemon that can barely be anything and practically can use nothing at all. As you might have noticed if you can read English all three starter Pokemon are now illegal you know because Bulbasaur full of A, Charmander is swamped in dirty letters and Squirtle just got nicked right at the end and while I like to call him Squirt he's fucking banned. In fact in fact, most of the Pokemon aren't legal, the list of allowed ones being only Volpix, Nidorino, Jigglypuff, Wigglytuff, Oddish, Gloom, Psyduck, Golduck, Muck, Duduo, Dudrio, Onix, Hypno, Voltorb, Lickitung, spelt beautifully by the way, Chad Pokemon, Quaffing, Rhyhorn, Rhydon, Jinx, Pinsir, another blessed spelling, Ditto, and Porygon. Now, since I have to start the game with one of these Pokemon, which isn't hard, you can do this, lots of people do this, look it up, not cheating, I have to make a decision about who is fair play. And for me, I thought all evolutions seemed unfair to begin with, and that struck off Nidorino, Hypno, and Muck, but let's talk about Muck more in a minute. Now, you might think I have a nice little litter of Pokemon to still choose from, all kinds and types and stuff, even with the potential to evolve, and yeah, that's awesome, except it's not, it sucks ass. Everything starts with moves that aren't allowed. I'm just gonna pick out one of these arbitrarily to discuss what's wrong. Uh, Lickitung, my man, he starts with a Rap and Supersonic, and both of those moves are banned, so he can't do anything to attack. You fucking disappointment. Jigglypuff, how about it? Oh look, that's Sing, that's legal, that's allowed, but it does no damage at all. Great. So then the question became, of all of these, which ones could actually deal damage and play the game? And the list narrowed to Coughing, Muck, and Jinx. Let's start with Muck, because he's banned anyway, but he's not a good pick in any event. He has Pound, Disable, and Poison Gas, and two of those aren't legal, but Pound is looking pretty good. I I'm alright with Pound. It's a fairly strong, actually, sorry, no, it's an absolutely weak-ass attack with at least good accuracy and a substantial amount of PP. I love having huge PP, that's great. As Muck levels up, he can learn nothing at all. Okay, well, great. That's Wonderful. You might inquire, what about TMs? Well, those are allowed, and what get, you get toxic and mimic. That's all you get. Uh, well, toxic is more akin to having distractingly bad ass sweat than being a killing blow, and mimic, while legal, copies an opponent's move, and that typically doesn't work. That is because 90% of the game only has pound or bite or something like that, so it wouldn't even change much, and for anything that is strong, usually the Pokemon you're fighting will be the same type as the move anyway, and that probably contains an A or an E, so that, you know, this fucking sucks. The point is, this challenge sucks. So Muck gets two bad moves and a worthless one. Muck's out of here. We're not even looking at him anymore. Get Stop looking at Muck. Coughing, on the other hand... Smog, smog, smog. Smog has 20 attack power, 70% accuracy, and 20 PP. It's literally PP, like penis cock. It's a huge dong of an attack, and it irritates me. I'm coughing on this smog. That's all it's good for. I love this writing. It's goddamn... It's shit. After that, coughing would learn nothing at all and can learn toxic and mimic from TM.
TMs as well. This challenge is looking kind of improbable, isn't it? So coughing is a bad, bad choice. How's Jinx looking? Now Jinx, she begins with Pound, the best of these moves so far, and also Lovely Kiss that can't be used, but you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. At level 18, she learns another usable move, Lick. Kinda sucks dick. This is a weak, weak ghost type move, but with a paralysis chance and 30 PP as well, that's not too bad. It's something. Every other move she'd learn is on the ban list, but in terms of TMs, we have some good news. We can grab Toxic, you know, who cares, but Submission, a moderately powerful fighting type move that hurts you when you use it. And finally, the big boy, the best shit I've ever seen, Psychic. That's actually an amazing move for Jinx, because while the other two physical attacks are nice to have and all, Jinx has an awful attack. Like, why would you attack with this Pokemon levels of bad attack? But you know what, that's it. We're going with Jinx, and I'm excited. I'm going to pound, lick, and submission everyone I see. It's just like my life, for real, for real. And deep into the game, I'm going to learn Psychic, and that'll be really great. Oh yeah, fine. I just punched my temple. Holy sh- Oh yeah, final thing to finish up the explanation with the last little bend of the rules I have to partake in is the game's arbitrary requirements to get through trees and push rocks and stuff. I make use of an HM bot, as I'm calling it. That's not what anyone else calls it. But essentially, I go and I catch one with a Pokeball. I know, it's sacrilegious. A Spiro to trade for this far-fetched named Duck, so at least his nickname isn't terrible. I do this to learn cut and do nothing else forever. And then late into the game, I get a free Lapras to Turch, to Turch, to Turch, to fucking Turch, to teach Surf and Strength. I hate this concession, but a lot of runs don't seem to do much differently here because it's annoying that like seven spots on the overworld will ruin the purity of the challenge. And it doesn't matter. These two Pokemon are never used in battle and never gain any experience. Oh yeah, by the way, I've never beaten Pokemon Red before. I, I bet you expected I'd say that now. Something you may like to know about me, your buddy and good old pal and the old yada is that I've always found Pokemon to be fairly mid as all the fucking children might say. I have no bad blood with all the, most of the games though, except the lazy shitty ones. There might be a few of those, but in fact, I've played many of the different generations and usually had a good time with them. It's just that they're made for those previously referenced children, therefore the games don't stomp my balls enough. It's why after a few badges, I typically lose interest and you'll find me beating Back to the Future on the NES, a real man's game, but since I vaguely don't know anything about types or who uses what, it'll be more interesting when I get my head rammed. Choose whatever head you prefer here, but I'm aware of some of the more powerful things in the game. I want you to know that. It's great. I'll be prepared. I won't be prepared. I actually don't know what's going on online. As I start, I gotta put in a name and I have a great idea. It is I, I, and I have to put in a name for my rival, and there's nothing I hate more in life than two letters, so here's I versus... <laughs> After that, I wanders around Pallet Town for a bit, a site I never grows tired of because this is the only place I will ever spawn, and I'm told to go talk to Professor Choke on my cock. And I do, and he's like, I got no shit going on. Take one of my random monsters here, maybe like a Charmander or something, and I say, Jinx, I want this Jinx. He's like, fuck, I had a Jinx, as my rival whines because no one cares about him. He decides that since I'm becoming the god of Pokemon, he wants to become one as well and takes a Charmander and demands to battle me instantly. This first bout goes almost badly, like, I don't lose, but imagine if I did. Charmander scratches me a few times and even crits me once, causing me incredible body pain, but fortunately, dumb rival AI makes him use Growl a few times, which gives my Jinx the opportunity to pound him to death. I wish that was me. Anyway, he leaves mad because bad, and I go to my mom's house and get healed up. Mom yells, I, you, proving she's crazy and doesn't know who should take a rest, but I go upstairs and sleep anyway and this fortunately restores Jinx to full health. You might notice the house contains an E, but you don't know that I call my house my crib, so that's fine. This is a legal place to sleep. Not to mention death, which heals me back to full health, also has an E and an A in it, but you know what? I refer to death as, ouch, I am hurt, going to my crib now, and you know, that's fine as well. That's illegal. So now I, on his quest to become the Pokemon guy who misunderstands the point of the world of Pokemon, travels around and bludgeons for a bit, like literally pounding little creatures into the earth as I only have 35 PP. It's not enough to pound for an extremely long time. Fucking PP sucks. Unless Unless you're into that sort of thing. All this means is that it makes it imperative I go back and forth to my house and take a nap pretty often. Anyway, amongst all this fun of Jinx aping the ground as I just farm a few levels, I get to Viridian City and seeing some drunk man is blocking my way, I have to randomly talk to people until I enter the mart and see that you need to bring this package to Professor Bloke, so I head back and get a cheeky little level. Say hi to the dumbass. <laughs> Again, and I mean, are you gonna leave this room anytime soon, man? Oak is happy with us and gives us a device that probably costs several thousand dollars. It's like the new iPhone for this world, and we don't even thank him. Stupid ass children these days. Our rival receives one as well, says some shit no one cares about, and then informs us he's going to go get a map from his sister, but you can't have one. She's not gonna give us one. I don't get why I can't just go buy my own map. Does his sister work for Rand McFucking Nally or something? Besides, immediately after, I just go and get a map from her as well, so it's apparent she hates his dumbass or she knows my go-to strategy in life is pound and that concept reaches her on a spiritual level. I head up to Pewter City, but some 
punk ass, stanky ass, dumb ass kid, goody two shoes, little bitch boy, annoying, sycophantic bastard makes me not go towards the east and insists I have to fight Brock before I can move on. Like, kid, what if I was just a, a tourist or something? But I'm confident. All in all, I'm pretty happy with how things are going. I got in a few levels. I'm feeling ready to deal with Brock, who in many ways, you guessed it, is difficult and I hate him. Also, he's a cock. I'm not sure why at level 13 I thought I would win this. I really don't know what I was thinking. Brock puts me into the ground with minimal effort. First, before the Brock man himself, I go against junior trainer male, who possesses a diglet and a sand shrew. My level 13 Jinx does not have the fortitude to defeat both, and Sandscrew puts the screws on me and I'm back in my bed at home. I walk back as I commonly do, and through a series of awe-inspiring intelligent moves, I pound 20 times in a row. After my victory with a very hurt Jinx, I decide to look at Brock and get an express ticket back home, and I feel like my chances of beating him are pretty poor at this point. Brock, as a region champion, or whatever he is, has only two Pokemon and also no shirt, or even shoes it looks like. This is supposedly the eighth best trainer anyone could find. In regards to the battle, Brock possesses a Geodude and an Onix, and since both of these rock types have little concern about a Jinx pounding them, like I get to see that one pound does like one tenth of the Geodude's HP, I realize that Lick is going to be a necessary thing to get. So I start training for a bit, realizing that poison is a death sentence as I can never use an antidote, and all in all, I'm having a decent time, I'm getting stronger, pounding a lot, you know. For fun, I try beating Brock again, <laughs> oh, that's that, you shouldn't have said that, at level 16, and while I get closer to defeating the Geodude, I lose and get nothing for my trouble. Another level of and I just wing it, trying Brock at level 17, and eh, I lose again. Just, you know, get lick, please. I, I want to lick this guy's stones. That's what the game is telling me, so I go back to the grind and go for level 18. Level 18 comes, and I receive lick, which, to reiterate, is very weak. The only difference is that rock types won't resist a ghost type, so it's probably superior to pound, even while disregarding the paralyzed chance coming from the attack. Back at Geodude, and lick proves to be superior, even prompting dumbass Brock to use a full heal to remove the paralysis effect. With this new move, I can suck on the Geodude like a lollipop and with him dead I can face Onyx with half HP. Onyx bides and I didn't know what that did so I said sure uh, you know no damage this turn great and I got started licking the damage is so bad though lick takes like a long time to actually whittle through his health but I get started and until I learn what bide does I'm having a good time and then I learned what bide does and bide hits me hard but I remain steadfast seeing as I have nothing else to do and I continue to lick over and over a tackle and another bide later and died I did but at least it's proving to be possible sooner than later I decide one more level should decide it wordplay genius big dick fun and I head back to Brock again. This time, the AI has a strange obsession with curing paralysis, which continues to help me, and he suffers a defeat from the barrage of licks I throw at him. I defeated Brock! Fucking dumb game. Now the kid that was blocking me before is gone, presumably depressed because I totally owned his mentor, I can go through this rocky area with a bunch of trainers, and I'm just happy we're back to Pidgeys and Caterpies and stuff I can just pound highly effectively. While wandering about, I find a potion, and that illuminates the fact that I can, in fact, heal somewhere other than my home. The problem really is that I need to carry a ton of regular potions to achieve any kind of real healing ability as I can't use super or hyper potions because my rule set sucks. I also recall a path prior to Pewter City that required the boulder badge to pass and 12 feet after the checkpoint where you must prove you're not a shithead, you once again have to prove yourself, so I realize this must be the end of the game and I frown and vow to return and annihilate everyone over here at some point. Back on the road towards Mount Moon, I pound some last. Don't read into that. I pound some birds. I pound some pink being. Okay, anyway, that's enough innuendo. But in fact, I died of the Clefairy anyway. I was pounded right back home and I get an express ticket to my house. Finally, through the entrance, to Mount Moon, I see there's a Poke Center here, and that's great. Regular players surely would love that. I hop on inside, and since there's a variety of dudes of the Geo variety, I get licking and pound when I can. And in general, there's a lot of that going on. Some more bug catchers and other children I have to destroy. Except then, this grown-ass man in a mime costume is here, the first of many Team Rocket workers, or terrorists, or I don't know what they really want to be called, but either way, this guy's more working for Team Cockick because he sucks, gave his sand screw the screw, gave the Rattata the Ratatat, and uh, Zubat, I shit on him too, I guess. As I blunder through this large mountain, I'm slowly wearing out and feel another emergency delivery to my mom's house coming on, and for other reasons I can't tell you now, I walked all the way home, which isn't actually a total waste because if you aren't aware, every time you die, you lose half the money you're currently carrying, a fact which I paid little attention to as I was going on as I was just burning a ton of my cash. Since you only get cash for trainer fights, I essentially was wasting a huge swath of my potion buying potential. By the way, before I go back to Mount Moon, I go and take care of that Spearow I need to catch in order to get my HM bot up and running, and I promptly show my contempt for this action with a good nickname and shove him into Bill's box immediately. Box is legal, doesn't have an A or an E in it, and Bill is a great name for similar reasons. I get to relive the joy of moments ago when I lose my life again to Clefairy pounding my noggin, so yeah, this place is going great. There's apparently a figure in here referred to as the Super Nerd, which is funny. 
I kill them. I'm just kidding. I merely kick them in the poke of balls and exude my large dick dominance over them. Finally outside, breathing in the fresh air of a new land, knowing that I will soon be transported back across the mountain that took me forever to cross, but for now, more walking towards Cerulean City. Once here, I feel like I might as well go look at the gym and die quickly, so I head straight there. First up before Misty is Swimmer, classic Pokemon character that, I mean, look, it's David Swimmer. He's something or other. He has a horsey and a shelter, and they aren't too much for me to handle. The next fight with junior trainer female, though. Fuck's sake, her gold dean gives me the gold dick, and I die instantly. All the way back to Cerulean with the hopes that I can beat the whole gym this time. I will not be. Spoiler warning. Despite confusion nearly making Jinx backhand herself to death, I do eventually overcome the gold dean and get to try Misty. Once again, very good. Trainer Misty has two Pokemon that are as close to the same thing as you could get, with the star you coming out first and actually being trashed by me. Go I, nice work. The star me, on the other hand, gives me a good long stare with its eye. I suppose that makes sense, and it zaps me back into my bed back home. It's all good though. My mother likes to see me. She's wondering what's going on, so thank Thanks for that. Back in front of Mr. and this time the fight is not bad. I do as I always do and will pound both the stars to death. Very heroic and not terrifying at all as I collect my second badge. Misty informs me that I can now cut stuff. I mean, what, what are you, a fucking police officer? I go north and bump into fucking dumbass again and he's talking mad shit annoying me and you know what I'm going to slam him to death for this I actually get destroyed uh damn back on the road again reflect on the fact that if you will I have probably played this game through the beginning more times than you have and I've never even beaten the game once if that bothers you well sucks to suck back with my hated rival this time with full health and while he's sporting some cool stuff like a Pidgeotto and an Abra you know I've got pounds so it's pretty even he's also got a Rattata I guess but I just legit smack its face and it doesn't want any more of that shit after dunking on him again with no effort whatsoever I'm happily content in the fact that I will be too hurt to probably progress through anything else and will soon be dead but in fact apparently there's nothing to worry about you think there would be with this random section of the five trainers you have to beat up but they're mostly weak children so I just churn through them it's a good time to mention though I can also never replenish my PP I need to sleep for that refractory period or something so I basically get to attack 35 times with pound and then I'm down to lick and that's not going to carry me very far unless I'm going up against some kind of ghost type uh, I'm dead again by the way so I just run back it's my life now at this point there's a lot of trainers to get past and I'm actually trying to not fight as many as I possibly can mostly because I'm sick of running home but also because I don't want to be overly powerful I'd like this challenge run to be fun is what I thought so I, not, I better not become overpowered this slot becomes antiquated finally through the thick murk of tums 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 of dumb people who don't want to lose and give me money I get to the house of Bill who's a fucking Pokemon for some reason Bill y y are you stupid as hell we help him out by hitting some buttons on the keyboard and he steps into a machine and becomes human again this is a weird ass side quest I gotta say for this assistance, we get a ticket to the Shushtafel Anna boat where you... I actually, in fact, don't know. They don't really say what the boat's for. You just... You kind of just get on the boat and defeat people and leave. Chad, I is. I go buy potions with the money I have, plus the money I get for selling the TM that gives dig. And you might wonder, wait, D-I-G, that's a legal move. And yeah, totally would be, except Jinx, the Pokemon with fucking hands and arms, can't dig. I guess she just likes using her fists to pound things. Or no joke, she's just pounding with her head or her ass. But I'm, I'm salty about this fact because I'd love to have a good move right about now. Of of course, I did go get the dig TM from this Team Rocket member who was breaking into this house here in Cerulean, which was prohibiting me from progressing previously. I'm not such a hero though, I beat him in a children's Pokemon battle and let him leave. I'm sure the cop who's on the other side of the house would be happy to catch this guy, but I'm dumb, I guess. Too bad. Cue another long walk in the hills where everyone wishes to battle. Even this guy called the gentleman. What do you seriously want to prove right here? Don't you have somewhere to be, like work? Why are you fighting like a kid in the side of the road? On the SSN now, there's a lot of cabins to look inside of with a lot of good items like rare candies. And for for evident reasons, those are worthless to me, but I can sell them for a pretty penny. And before you say sell has an E in it, understand that I am only now realizing this and I regret selling shit. Fuck, I messed up the entire challenge. Well, you know, we'll call it giving, that's fine. And they give us money for our gifts, it's great. Give has an E as well. Also, appears again. Bro, where'd you get a ticket? I had to pull off some kind of magic shit to get a ticket from this strange poker wizard in the woods. You Craigslist this shit? This fight is really easy for me since he's barely different from last time and I win in one shot. He then informs me that there's a cut master on board and bro, that sounds like some sort of criminal. I'm getting off this boat. But what he is referring to was the captain, who's seasick. I go into his private quarters and rub him. No, I am serious. That's what you do. Just his back, so the game would have us believe. And he teaches us the secret of cut, which is HM1. After washing our hands and shit, we go back to our adventure off of this boat, and I go trade my Spearow for a duck, so a far-fetched who I can teach cut to. With this done, I can enter the next gym. 
Lieutenant Sage is here and he's fairly easy despite getting paralyzed very early into the battle. I can blast his three Pokemon very well, even with the ability to one shot his Pikachu. Also, by the way, I can never cure this status effect or any of them for that matter. So poison, for example, death sentence, going to die from that easily. So being paralyzed, this kind of dictates that I'm eminently going to lose as this wrecks my speed and causes me to miss entire turns. But I don't know why I'm explaining this to you unless there's a large audience of people who know this game's mechanics less than I do. Watching this video about a guy who doesn't know what he's doing and is talking about what he's doing and how large his dick is. It's gigantic, by the way. But anyway, that's Lieutenant Surge with another badge. Let's get the fuck out of here. After this, apparently AFK'd for an hour. This footage is of that. Wasting your time should be a crime. Milking YouTube view duration, giving myself good lubrication. Anyway, that was fun. Now it's time to be dead again, and back we go. But really, now it's the Rock Tunnel, a place that's dark as shit, but the ladders are luminescent, so I can figure out this place without bringing Flash. I bumble for a bit, being surprised by the random trainers standing in the dark void, ready to kill me, but for the most part, it's just tedious working through here. After a while, I run out of steam from the copious battles and die again. Mount Moon, Cerulean Rock Tunnel, again and a fucking again. Remember I said if I got a status ailment, it's kind of like a doomsday sentence? Well, it, it really is, and if only I could save anywhere, I wouldn't care about it so much, but I've been doing this walk like five times now, it's starting to piss me off. Speaking of being pissed off, this heinous, sinister man standing in the darkness named Hiker is one of the biggest trolls I've ever seen in a game designed to be enjoyed. This random man you can't skip has two Geodudes with self-destruct and a Graveler who lobs a stone at me. It's not an exaggeration to say this was the hardest challenge in the game so far. Fucking Hiker, dude. Who is this guy? He should run the rock gym, not cock. I don't get why this randomly is the best trainer around here, and he's sitting in a cave in the dark waiting to kill children. As these rock types don't give a care about Pound, I spend a lot of my time licking them like a Tootsie pop and the only thing I can hope for is a lucky streak of paralysis to keep them at bay. The attempt I finally win involves Graveler doing a bunch of flexes at me, just curling his mighty biceps as I lick him. Takes like seven licks in a row, but he doesn't feel like doing 11 damage to me, so I'll take what I can get. Awful, awful battle. Sadly, getting out of here is still not easy. The trainers have Pokemon that poison, paralyze, and do big damage. It's a nightmare, but nothing was as bad as the legend himself. Fat hiker man, so I struggle and push through and make it outside at last. So I make it to Lavender Town, and I don't have to take much care of anything around here as I don't have to do the tower just yet. I know this because I looked at the fuck up. Sorry, it won't happen again, boss. On my way to the east, I have to endure some trainer battles with minimum HP, like very min. Fortunately, there's not a lot of rock types hanging around, so I can quickly dispatch the adversaries and move into the next town of Celadon. Big fucking place, this. I can't be bothered looking around every nook and cranny, so I head to the mart to pick up a soda pop to give to a guard that will allow me to stop going through the Dwayne the Rock tunnel, and I could use every advantage I can get to walk around the game world. Additionally, you can pick up the submission TM here, and that is an amazing development. I can now smash rock types with this move, and it'll only take out a tiny portion of my ass per use, so we finally have three of our four moves. Then in a totally not looked up fashion, I go over to this random house in Saffron City and collect our fourth final unstoppable move of Psychic, the first thing that a Jinx should actually have on. No joke. This move makes a lot of the game plausible to complete, and without it, I'm not positive you could beat the final section of the game. The only caveat is that it only has 10 PP before being expended, but as to not reference this later, I collect the three secret PP up, what a stupid fucking resource name, and apply them all to Psychic, boosting its usage amount to 16. That's relevant. Highly, highly relevant for later. Now with this taken care of, I head over to the next gym in Celadon city and considering I have like 10 HP I expect to die but I figure I might as well be able to tear through a few of the trainers before Erica. As it happens I, I literally defecate all over these plants like I'm fertilizing everything here. Psychic is that potent. Since I really have nothing to lose I square up against Erica and she brings out the victory bell. It's more like the lost tree bell and it gets one tapped by my brilliant brain power then Tangela gets a bit flustered from my mighty mind. Then Vileplume gets overly fuckstered by my titanic thinker and I swept the battles without taking one point of damage. I'm a poke god now. Now I'm spending my time going around town because I don't know what's going on, talking to random people and flexing my badges when I discover a random Team Rocket member guarding a poster and a battle instantly begins. Due to my lack of thought, I use submission instead of psychic on his Zubat and die horribly. So that was a good run, you know, I actually genuinely was. I got a lot done and I'll swiftly jog back here and we can continue with whatever this place is. Before I head all the way back, I sell a bunch of junk in Pewter City and load up on 70 potions so I can sustain in the environment for longer. Back at the guard now, and I easily win with two psychics. After the fight, inspecting the poster reveals a hidden button, and I give it a little push to open up a secret staircase. It's also at this point I open the options menu for the first time and discover I can turn off battle animations, and also if I want to swap my Pokemon to my shitty HM bot after every single victory in a trainer battle, so that's nice. This uh, department store dungeon with the slowest arrow panels ever created irks me, but it, you know, it's fine. I just bounce around and I figure it out. Eventually, made my way to the lift key holder who is coughing in Zubat, the 
average go-to of I've been to a cave nearby. I don't know how to catch anything else. Please help me. Vanquished and done. I collect his key. To get into Giovanni's inner sanctum, I have to defeat two guards who have three mon each, and I decide to sweep with Psychic just because I don't feel like walking back here. Now, Hyper Widow's peak-ass Giovanni is here, and the fight should be super simple, but I decide to try and see if submission is enough for both the Onyx and the Rhyhorn. I suffer large hits and a miss, and I'm frowning. I'm just pissed off. But with 11 HP remaining for his Genghis Khan, I pop a little Psychic into the equation and take care of Giovanni. If only this crime lord knew the rules and knew you were allowed to have six Pokemon. With him dead, I mean, that's the end of him. He doesn't return, guaranteed. I get the Sylph scope and wonder what the hell it is, and I go back to the outside world. While looking around, I find an Eevee on a table, and I nearly vomit at the sight of nearly five E's in one name and promptly shove it into Bill's PC for the rest of time. I get back to Lavender Town and try to ascend the tower now, and I'm a little nervous. I'm low on psychics, but I've been able to heal, so I'm not at death's door at least, and then he returns again, this fucking guy, and I'll figure, you know, fine, I'll suplex his bird a little bit. Pidgeotto goes down without absolutely destroying me, and then I stupidly pound a group of eggs, which two shots him with a lucky crit. I mind mangle the G-Yard operating system and then suplex Kadabra, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. A little pound to finish the job, and then I'm face to face with Charm Lion. He inflicts burn on me, which is a horrible problem that I can't cure, so I decide to all in with Psychic and defeat him. He calls me a stinker because he's literally 10 years old or he's Bugs Bunny, and I figure I try to get a little bit higher into this place before dying. Now, I want you to know something I discovered. There's a pad here that heals you for all your health and cures status ailments. That sounds right up my alley, like so great that it exists. Although the fact is I am a stinker because I don't see using this pad as valid because it's called Pad. P-A-D. Fuck the pad. So the alternative is going around this trainer who is blocking the way, and she is unfortunately right in the pathway unless you make her take one step to meet you in a duel. Obviously, if I win this fight, she'll be out of the way unless I lose and have to walk back from my house again, where she'll reset position. So just so you know, I go forth and get to the ghost slash Marowak encounter up ahead and then promptly die to the rocket guard and therefore have to reset the game to a previous encounter. Fortunately, I had just stopped for the session after beating Giovanni and saved in my house. So after a long walk to my house to heal and and then back to the tower, I was ready to not have to do this shit again. This time, I almost just got poisoned uh, almost instantly. God's sake, I hate myself and my dumbass rules, but I like the big fat view stack I might get on this video. The three guards at the end aren't a problem with Psychic being available, though, and I obtain the Poke Flute, which is something I just don't know what it's for yet. Back on the road, I find this fat-ass Snorlax and realize the flute is used on this guy, and awake he becomes, and asleep he goes as soon as I Psychic him back into the ground. Inside, I'm told no pedestrians are allowed here, and I need to get a bike, and I, I don't know what he's telling me. I've never heard of a bike either before and I don't want to I don't want to know what it is really so I just leave wondering if you also need a bike to win the game fortunately south of lavender town is a new pathway I haven't been on the fisherman land and there's a long walk I'm, I'm sick of these long walks I must say down here is another Snorlax I mean is there a problem going on why are we ignoring these fat sleeping beasts everywhere regardless I wreck another innocent sleeping creature and can progress to the west Guess what? It's another path, more people want to fight me and lose, and they're just suckered in by the sight of me having one Jack Jinx, and I wish to be concaved by the thickness. That's my explanation. Maybe everyone is a lunatic. Either way, I don't die anymore through this part and get to Vermilion City. But actually, I promptly turn around and check out the other southern pathway first. This leads to a war zone of twists and turns, but another PP up, so that's good. You never know when you want your PP to be more up. I've made this joke like 65 times. With another heavy supply of potions, I get by, but the copious trainer battles have worn on my power points, and health related or not, I will soon have to get back home. After that long walk, finally I'm in Fuxia, a place with a name I can respect, and I decide to enter the gym straight away. Get poisoned straight away. Goodness, I dislike poison. I run out of power against Muck, and that's all she wrote. I tediously attempt to lick this sludge man, and it doesn't work because that's just a vile idea, not a valid one, and dead, back home. With the guard shacks now open, I get back to where I was a bit faster, but there's not much further across the whole region I could go. It's like corner to corner at this point. And yeah, I get back, get poisoned, and die to one Chad Hypno. What is wrong with me? How did I? I don't even remember doing this bad against this guy's one random hypno. Let's just skip the Koga. I mean, I get there eventually. He's the gym owner here and he's full of poison types. Mostly has a bunch of balls. Quite literally. So Psychic will Psychic his ass. And guess what? It's another time a trainer literally does zero damage to me. Isn't that wonderful? The rest of Fuxia has little to see except for the Safari Zone and the one guy who's talking with a sock in his mouth. So I'll come back when I learn sock. The Safari Zone was a tedious experience as you have limited steps allowed inside. You need to get a few key items to progress and they're near the secret house deep inside the arena. Count like five times I walked through here before getting the right path, and yeah, whatever, I didn't want that money anyway. The grand prize for reaching the secret house is HM3, which contains Surf, and if you get the Sock Man's teeth back in here, he'll give you HM4 with strength, and these are all the required moves for traversing the overworld. So we can stop having to think about moves and Pokemon with the letter E in them, thank God for that. I go back to Celadon City and can now enter the Rocket Hideout, and this place bores me to no end. I beg for it to end. I'm like a rope's corner, a complete foreigner. I blunder around this criminal playground trying not to break down, looking to need Giovanni right in his balls, make him fall. That's the gist of what this place is. Thanks for 
listening, we're going to Giovanni again. Dude, I smoked this guy. Rolled up in one drag and he's dragged down to my level. One jinx is all I need to blow up his Pokemon. I'm on the speedrun lifestyle. He's throwing Pokeballs at me once per second and they die before they hit the ground. He's balding and mad and could say malding in fact and says, I'll get you next time you little shit and he leaves for some reason, but whatever, he doesn't return. That's the end of his evil doings. Then President Pokeball gives me a Master Ball, one of the best items in the entire game, capable of catching anything in one shot. After this, I go and sell the Master Ball for zero dollars and feel better knowing it's A's and E's are no longer near me. Oh, with all the bars I was spinning, I totally forgot to mention Idiot was here in the Rocket Hideout, just didn't even notice, and really reason for that was he's basically just got beefier versions of the same things he's always had. After defeating... <laughs> You get a free Lapras from this random guy here, and to preserve my sanity, as this will be my Pokemon who knows Surf and Strength, I name him Lippers and just feel slightly better about this. Now I take a tactical death and can now surf south to Cinnabar Island. This route has a bunch of people swimming in the ocean wanting to battle because everyone is crazy in this world, but none of them are particularly interesting. Once here, you can't enter this gym because it's locked. It's funny that there are people inside though, so they're just assholes who don't want to get jinxed, but forget that, because to unlock the door, you have to go get a key from the Pokemon Mansion. This is a long section with a lot of running from enemies, nothing noteworthy. Now, in the gym, you have to answer all the questions on computers to open doors, and if you don't get the answer right, you have to fight a trainer. I'm not dumb or eight years old, so I do well. I only mess up one question. Bet you're jealous. Unfortunately, the fight was easy, and I get to Blaine with a lot of energy remaining. While Psychic doesn't one-shot all his Pokemon, I defeat Blaine easily. Take that, fully bald man. I'm feeling sort of motivated and sort of down about the fact that I'm destroying everything with Psychic now. Like, it's not even close. I'm worried the game is going to be pointlessly easy, and my challenge video is going to suck and be bad. Let's just fill in this part of the UI in case you're worried about the same thing. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, let, we, don't worry, we have some shit to worry about. But let's clear up the rest of the game before that point because really nothing is too worrisome now. I go find Sabrina and she has a whip. Fucking hell, I can see the pain in Mr. Mime's eyes. But beyond that, I mind blast everything down and she says, damn. Finally, we're one badge away from having them all and being allowed to take on the Elite Four, and I'm back there. Viridian City Gym, and it's a mess of floor tiles and people standing in narrow hallways. What kind of operation is this? It's like the DMV in here. Regardless, it happens that the leader of this gym is Mr. Butthead himself, Giovanni, and he's here with his, he's here with his full might, which is still only five fucking Pokemon. Dude, come on. This fight is funny because I kill him in five attacks. Jinx just stares into the eyes of his Pokemon and ends them with a thought. I mean, that's pretty badass, right? I hit up my crib and it's now time. The final challenge of the game, Victory Road and the Elite Four. I am fucked. On my way there, shows up and exclaims, what, I? Because he's a stupid asshole and it's time for yet another rival battle. Now this is funny because for the first time in a while, I cannot nuke this guy. He's actually formidable since Psychic isn't able to tear him apart. So let's just go through it. Pidgeot, this one sucks, forget it, one Psychic and dead. Rhyhorn, dumbass choice, gets annihilated. Egg Pile actually takes two Psychics to put down, which sucks, but the damage pile of eggs does isn't too hefty. But the Leech Seed he puts on me actually is a large negative as it'll heal his other Pokemon. Gyarados absorbs one Psychic that doesn't crit and puts a moderate sized hole in my body, but still over 100 HP for the last two fights. Chattakazam now, he drops his crotch onto my face. He resists Psychic and he crits me and Leech Seed heals him and I try to submission him because I'm bad and get desperate and I die. I come back and begin my assault on my rival again, but this time I don't one shot the Pidgeot. Six fucking eggs paralyzes me, Leech Seeds me, Alakazam slaps my head again, oh for God's sake. Next attempt, Egg Stack doesn't Leech Seed, but paralyzes me yet again so I'm getting fully pissed off. Alakazam just has too much thickness to work through and kills me again. We try once more and despite another paralysis to contend with, I manage to defeat Alakazam. Finally I get to see Charizard and I put him away with one psychic to win the battle. Stupid dumbass rival. Out of my way, I have to go beat the best trainers around who are standing right behind you so I'm glad we'll never battle again because it would make no sense for you to get stronger in the next 15 minutes. Goodbye and I'll see you in hell. I begin running up towards Victory Road and this is the only time I actually have to use strength to beat the game. This is the final dungeon and it involves pushing a bunch of fucking rocks around. I won't lie to you, I know this dungeon like the back of many of my body parts. I have seen it because I can't save. I had to walk through this rock hole like, well, I won't spoil it, doesn't matter, but with no repels, a huge encounter rate, and tons of slow moving stones to shove, and just a lot of frustration in my loins, I do not like this place. So we'll jump to the point where I actually get to see the final boss gauntlet, the Elite Four, and I'm not unconfident, I have a pretty good setup, I think, enough variety in moves, I have potions to supply myself between battles with 16 uses of Psychic, I think I can do it, just believe, you gotta believe in me. First attempt against Lorelei, I get crushed like a can. It's probably because I'm only level 62, but I don't hit hard enough to actually make it through these fights. I'm going to assume you know more about the game than I do, dear viewers. So for the remainder of the challenge, this is all business. No editorializing. I'm going to show you every attempt and failed moment. Here we go. Dugong really needs to die in one hit, but at the moment, it's just not happening. Growl's weakened me severely and Cloyster, the gross looking Pokemon himself, is very defensive and it just wastes a lot of my time. Slowbro is really tanky against Psychic, especially when I'm weakened and the Super Potion can suck my balls, but Pound can help with a steady supply of crits. And then there's Jinx, the cooler Jinx, the Jinx who walks up and gives me a psychic and doesn't care about my feelings. Second attempt, Dugong too thick, Cloyster I try to submission
mission, but it's all a waste of time with my attack stat right now. Slowbro is a wall as always, and then Jinx, backhand, dead again. Come on, Thrash is cheating. Why can't I have good moves? Submission, do going into him missing. That's good. That's cool. Cloyster just takes abuse, and this time he tosses out a fucking spike cannon and it crits and hits five times. Game is so bad, it's insane. As I'm walking through Victory Road, I'm wondering if I can even just beat L'Oreal right here. Same drill as before. Submission, do going twice. Dead. Hit Cloyster with a psychic. Dead. I psychic Slowbro. It barely does anything, so I pound him a bunch and finish him off with a psychic. Dead. With Jinx, I try using psychic just because it's the best attack I can possibly use, and through a war of attrition, I desperately win with a second use of psychic. I've never gotten to Lapras before, so I decide to see if psychic will just win the day, and no, it doesn't. I eat a body slam and die. What a climax that was. Rapid fire. Submission. Psychic pound. Psychic triple crit. Double slap. It's called double slap. The fuck? Heal psychic. Uh, what happens? Heal psychic me crit. I'm dead. Yeah. About the same thing up to Jinx happens again, and then I get paralyzed from body slam, and that's a death sentence. This has been like one hour for just Lorelei, by the way. Next attempt is some absolute top tier unbelievable bullshit. I want to explain this situation because it's one of the few technical aspects of Pokemon Red I know of. So I get all the way back to Lapras again. It's a rough series of fights, but I get there. Psychic is strong enough at this level to two shot Lapras. I'm doing moderately decently somewhat okay here. It's looking good. Now, this is a 100 accuracy move, meaning it should never miss. But in generation one, all moves have this weird calculation when the Determining accuracy. It rolls an equation and the developers miss part of the equation. Well done. Essentially, when attacking, you get a value between 1 and 256. The formula says if your value is below 256, you hit. But that's the thing. If you roll directly 256, that's a miss because the equation doesn't say less than or equal to, even though it should. That all being said, I miss, I get the trash luck, and then the hydro pump Lapras uses puts me on one health exactly. My next attack hits for over half his HP, and then another hydro pump just kills me. I, I want to stop playing now, please. Finally, on this attempt, I have just squeezed enough level out of dying, now being 68, and I reliably one to two shot a lot of her party except Slowpoke, but since Slowpoke does minuscule damn Slowpoke, Slowpoke does minuscule damage, I pound until I'm lucky and score a crit or 10. Lapras sticks around longer than I'd like, but finally I'm through the first of the Elite Four with 34 HP remaining. I have a lot of potions, so I begin to heal up and prepare for Bruno. Now, this is another example of where I'm just bad, because I blow way, way too many psychics in this fight. I can't use ether, so I only get 16 uses of psychic, and since I don't exploit type advantages with submission here, I just waste so much potential. That being said, I nuke Bruno from orbit. One-shotting everything in a row and taking no damage feels great, but it brings me up to Agatha. This moment has been one of the only reasons I have Lick, because it's super effective against several of Agatha's Pokemon. Sadly, Lick is still dick, nothing has changed, and trying to outgun a Gengar with Lick results in me taking a ton of damage. Still, I get lucky and Lick Haunter and one-shot Arbok and the second Gengar with Psychic, leaving me with three uses for the next two trainers. Lance, the final member of the DK crew, is, uh, is pretty strong. It's not going to go well. Dragons are powerful as I have nothing to remotely bother them and a lot of them shoot fire, which will melt Jinx. The fight begins with a hyper beam striking my face, having my HP. Okay, thanks. Well, great. Good time, Lance. Sadly, Psychic doesn't even one shot and I only have one charge of it left anyway, meaning I'm pretty doomed. I collect level 70 and look into the eyes of his Dragonair. When in doubt, pound it out is what I always say. It does like one fifth of his HP and I get hyper beamed again and die. Insufferable. From this point forward, I will speedily tell you how my attempts go and I'll give a little extra detail until I'm back to Lance. I actually get back to Lance again, but Agatha inflicts paralysis on me and it's so atrocious that I will now go second against every Pokemon. Still, I one-shot Gyarados with Psychic and then I miss several submissions on Dragonair and that's all she wrote. Next attempt, Gengar poisons me and I die heinously, thanks. This time, Jinx paralyzes me and that leads to my death at the hands of everything else. Try again. Jinx uses her body to break my bones, paralyzed once more, dead to Lapras. Next, I just die like to random damage on Lorelei. Okay, you know, whatever. I didn't even want to make a UP video. Again, dead to Jinx. This is some kind of karmic retribution that Jinx has killed me this many times. Finally, I make it back to Lance, and I have way more phys physics. I have way more fucking Albert Einsteins in my arsenal this time. Everything goes according to plan. I one-shot Gyarados with Psychic, and then I double submission two Dragonairs. Like, honestly, what a Sigma Jinx is here. Folded them both like an omelet as we progress to Aerodactyl for the first time. I'm too nervous about this one, and I just shoot it with one of my precious Psychics and kill it. Then it's Dragonite time, and I drag my balls out and drop another Psychic Anvil on him, defeating Lance. Now that I am victorious against the Elite Four, I beat the game. So thanks for coming. That's all there is. Game's done. Just kidding, stupid fucking is here somehow having just technically lost to me like well actually considering how many times i've died it's probably been like a few months since, since i beat him so never mind our rival is the final boss being the champion of the region i'm ready to introduce his head to his asshole so i begin my final assault 
Okay, Pidgeot, no problem. I miss a bunch of submissions and he keeps trying to whirlwind, which doesn't work in this battle, but still I lose way too much HP for the first fight, so I'm not feeling so confident. Alakazam comes out and Pound doesn't do an immense amount of damage, but it will get him down in three hits. Sadly, with Recover, he drags the fight out way longer than I want. I'm taking damage from Psy Beams and Psychic and it all just hurts, but eventually I also succeed against him. Right on next, and it's not right on because he survives a single Psychic, but you know, his tail whip does shit and a crit submission from me takes him down. Three to go, and Arrival puts out a bunch of eggs with faces on top of legs, and that's horrifying. Even more horrifying than that is the titanic defense this sickening sight has. Pound does like one-sixth of this monstrosity's HP, and he stomps me, and of course it just had to fucking crit, didn't it? That's it, there goes my dream of winning, it's back to Pallet Town with me to go through the long boulder pushing dungeon to fight all the Elite Four again, and then kill my rival once and for all. This sucks giga dick. Next attempt, I died a Gengar. It's like completely random that I lose to it, but I do. Next, Ghoulback crit wing attack, or as I like to call it, Gikwad dead. Paralyzed from Jinx against Bruno Onyx, dead. Hyper Beam Dragonair, dead. Oh, look at that, we're back at the final boss, but I got poisoned and eggs with faces and feet is so fucking tanky, it's unbelievable and it takes almost all of my health. But a crit pound to preserve my final two psychics gives me the killing blow and I'm further than I have ever been before. It's Gyarados and I whip out a huge attack, psychic blasts him for like 85% of his health and I die to a Hyper Beam, man. Next, I have a fantastic run and I have seven psychics left for my rival and then Lance's Dragonite Hyper Beam crits me and it's like the special beam cannon, hole right through my asshole, dead. Fun new way to die, I recoil myself on Hitmonlee, wah! Okay, third time's the charm, finally back on my rival, looking him square in the face as I begin my assault with nine psychics remaining. Level 91, all the way from the early 60s, that's how many times I have died. Pidgeot blown up, Alakazam slaughtered, right on, right on the ground. Egg fucker, annoying, but dead. Gyarados almost taken down in one shot, but fortunately he doesn't do much to me with his extra turn. Finally, it's the last Pokemon we ever have to look at if we win. It's Charizard and I, uh, I just psychic once and it fucking dies. What a boring game this is. No, honestly, imagine I wasn't playing with some shitheaded rule set. I would have been able to un unequivocally open my ass all over the trainers in this game, but only because I have pound for the whole time does it... You know, never mind, I'm actually just over the moon, it's over. Why did I lose? I didn't, you dumb fuck. Then Professor Coked out of his mind comes inside the arena and says that his grandson lost because he tried to use an actual team and he should have just brought one Jinx, but too late for that, he's disowned and declares that I is the Pokemon champion. I walk to the computer, I slap in one Pokemon entry and say, this world sucks, I'm leaving, and that's what I'm going to do here as well. I'm out. Thanks for watching. This has actually been a lot of fun. Uh, I really walk into Victory Road 500 times and pounding 10 billion times. I'm going to go stick my head in the nearest toilet. See you next time.